Hi, my name is Francie McLaughlin, and I'm a math teacher here at the Walter and Mine Academy. I have been a teacher for over 20 years, and prior to coming to the Walter and Mine Academy, I taught in public school for a decade, um, all subjects from pre-algebra up until calculus. Uh, I also spent another decade as a private tutor for those same subjects and also specializing on, um, in the SATs. Now, now that I'm here at Well Trained Mind, I would like to just take a little bit of time and tell you about what my classroom is like and also to uh, show you a sample teaching lesson. So I really love math. I love teaching it. I like doing math problems. and. One of my goals in class is to make sure students also get that love for math that I have. Um, some students naturally have that and are inclined to really enjoy math, and others can be very intimidated by it. So in the classroom, I really try to show everybody that they, all students there, that they are capable of succeeding. And by I do this by making sure that we go over all the concepts in really um, specific detail, showing students where the formulas that we're using come from, and then breaking a lot of difficult problems into small parts. So I really want to, I, I like to make sure that students don't feel discouraged and feel really confident in their math abilities by the time they're finished um, in my class. So the way my class is structured, students are expected did to read through the book and the material before they come to class. Um, not master it, but they should at least preview what we're going to do before they get there um, for the lesson that day. Then I usually begin the lesson with a warm up, which is a problem from the previous lesson, and it lets me see if we're okay to move on and if they have any questions. After that, I introduce a new concept. Uh, during this time, we'll develop the formula or the concept. I won't just give um, a formula to memorize and then have the students copy, you know, mimic me. I'll try to make sure they understand uh, where it comes from and how to use it because that will help as the problems get more difficult and we deal with word problems. After I go over the new concept, I'll model some problems for them. And then I usually write some problems on the whiteboard for students in the class to solve. And then at this time, some students may write um, on the board, you know, volunteer to write on the board or come on the microphone and explain their process. And this lets me know that overall the class is with me and we understand um, what the, the topic was today. Then if time, if we're allowed, um, if time is available, we'll go to the whiteboards. So every student will have a whiteboard login. Um, through the Welltrain Mind Academy, where they can log on and there will be some problems on the whiteboard. Uh, each student has their own whiteboard. They cannot see other students, but I can see all students in the class. So this is a really good opportunity for me to see all the students working on one problem at the same time, and I can go into their whiteboard. And if you're um, if they're doing it correctly, you know, give them a check and have them do the next problem. If they're not, I can write on their whiteboard and try to correct their mistake and direct them. Um, with the right process. So this is a really good way to end the class because it lets me see that um, if there are any questions and if there's a common mistake among all the students, I know we should probably go back and do a few more like that. After class, the students are expected to log on and begin their homework. We, uh, we meet two or three times a week, depending on what class uh, your child would take. So after each class, I really encourage them to log on and do their homework, begin it, so that at the end of the week, they don't have this large, overwhelming homework assignment waiting for them, but rather they've chipped away at it all week after each class, and then at the end of the week, there's just a little bit left to do. With that in mind, there are three attempts on all the homework and proofs that I give in class because I don't expect any to get a 100% on every math assignment the first time around. You know, math is difficult, it's easy to make little mistakes, you can have conceptual errors. So the idea behind giving students multiple attempts is that it encourages them to go back and look at the problems they got wrong and see if they can find their mistake and then either, you know, fix it up themselves or email me, ask for clarification, but you really learn best from your mistakes. So I encourage students to um, take a second or a third attempt on all their assignments and fix them before we go on to the new material. Um, so that's a general overview of how the classes run. Um, and what I'm going to do next is give you a short teaching sample of what it would be like if you were in my class for just a few minutes and got a glimpse of um, the teaching. 
This lesson would be in an Algebra 1 class immediately following a topic of solving linear equations, both one and two steps. So the student would have done one step, two step equation, worked with decimals, fractions, felt very comfortable solving all sorts of equations, and then we would move on to word problems. So the key to solving word problems is converting the words into the language of mathematics. This is the hardest part, getting the word problem into an equation. Once you can get it to the equation, it's usually um, easier to go from there, but the hardest part is just getting it to that equation. So there's a few steps to do this. That is the same for all word problems. And the first of uh, those steps is to choose a variable. So you always want to choose a variable, and the most common variable is x. But you don't need to use x. You know, if you're trying to find the number of apples in a basket, you can choose a. If you're trying to figure out the number of nickels and quarters in a jar, you can use n and q. You know, any variable that makes sense. But you want to choose a variable to represent the number you're looking for. Then you want to write an equation to represent the problem. After you write your equation, you want to solve the equation. But what's most important for word problems is you want to check. So you want to check your answer back in the original word problem and make sure that your equation is balanced, that it makes sense. And then you also want to do a feasibility check. You know, if you're solving for apples and you get negative 10, that's probably not right. You, you can't have negative 10 apples. Or if you're solving for nickels and quarters and you get the number of quarters is 2.5. That doesn't make sense to have two and a half quarters, so you probably should go back and double check your work. So check it both mathematically and make sure you do a logic check. So let's try two problems um, using these rules. So we want to write an equation and solve. So our first problem says three less than two times the number equals four times the number plus nine. Well, because we have this equals here, we really have two problems. We really have three less than two times the number, and then we have four times the number plus nine. So the first thing we want to do is define our variable. So we'll say x is going to be our number. Our unknown number is x. And then we want to just work with this part, three less than two times that number. Whenever you have three less than two times the number or three less than half a number, you always want to do two times the number or whatever is being multiplied by the number first. So we need to do this part first. So we need to say, well, two times the number would just be 2x. And then you do the three less than this last. So we would say two times x is twice my number. Three less than this, I would just take away three. So make sure the negative three is on the right hand side of your expression. Then if we come over to this side, we have equals four times the number plus nine. So we know we can put in our equal sign and say, well, this equals four times my number would be four times x plus nine. Okay, I have a great equation, it looks good. So why don't I go ahead and solve it and see what, um, what we get. So we'll take away two x from both sides. I'm left with negative 3 equals 2x plus 9. Let's take the 9 and move it over to the left-hand side. Subtract 9 from both sides. We get 2x is negative 12. Divide by 2, and I get x is negative 6. All right, so I got an answer. It looks good. But let's take that answer and check it in our original uh, expression. So here I have 3 less than two times my number. Well, I think that my answer is negative six. My number is negative six. So twice my number, twice negative six is negative 12. Three less than that is negative 15. So when I took my number and plugged it into the left-hand side, I got negative 15. Well, let's try to plug our answer into the other side. Four times the number plus nine. Well, four times my number is four times negative six, so that is negative 24, plus nine more would give me negative 15. So I feel really confident because I plugged negative six into the right side, I got negative 15, and to the left side, I also got negative 15. So my answer is x equals negative six. 
We're going to try one more problem that is a little bit more difficult, but we're going to use the same idea of defining a variable to solve it. The last problem that I'm going to go over is a, a, an age problem. So this problem goes, I am now three years younger than twice my age, what my age was six years ago. What is my age now? This problem can sometimes seem overwhelming because it's, there's a lot going on here. I'm three years younger than twice my age six years ago. And the best way to start a problem like this, if you're not sure what to do, is define your initial variable. So they're asking, what is my age now? So we're looking for the current age of this person. So we want to at least say, let's define x as my current age, my age now. So this is how old I am now. Okay, so that's what we're trying to find. And let's read it again. I am now three years younger than twice my age six years ago. Well, I don't know my current age, and I also don't know my age six years ago, but I can write an expression for my age six years ago. If I asked you how old you are, you, um, or how old you were six years ago, you would just take your age and you would minus six, right? Well, we can do that, but just with X. So we can say since X is the current age, six years ago would be X minus six. And this represents my age six years ago. So whatever your age is, if you wanted to know what your age is six years ago, you would just take away six. So now I have two expressions, and now I should be able to solve a problem like this. So if we go through, I am now, so my current age now is X. I am three years younger than twice what I was six years ago. Well, my age six years ago is X minus six. So twice my age six years ago would be twice x minus six. That would represent twice whatever I was, however old I was six years ago. Well, I am, my age x here is three years younger than that. So I have to subtract three from whatever twice my age six years ago was. So I have an equation, it looks good, but the best way to see if you did a problem like this correctly is to um, solve it. So let's distribute the two, and I get 2x minus 12 minus 3 is equal to x. If I combine like terms, I get x equals 2x minus 15. I will take away negative 2x from both sides. Negative 1x equals negative 15 divide by negative 1, and I get x is 15. So I think I have an answer. I think my current age is 15, which would mean six years ago I would have been 9. Well, let's take these answers and see if they work out in the original. Okay. So I am now 15. Is that equal to twice my age six years ago? Well, twice my age six years ago would have been 9 times 2, twice 9 is 18. If Am I currently 3 years younger than this 18? Yes, 18 minus 3 is 15. My answer makes sense. So I checked it, and it makes sense in my original equation. Um, I hope that you enjoyed a little sample of this teaching lesson. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the Welch Academy, and I hope to see your student in class someday.